Welcome to Chatsunami. Hello everybody and welcome to the very first episode of Chad Tsunami in 2024. My name's Sad Tsunami and joining me today is none other than the podcasting legend himself. You may have heard him in his podcast casting views, it's the one and only Dan. Dan, welcome back to Chat Tsunami. Hi Satsu, I've just got the biggest smile on my face, what an intro. You're a lovely guy, thank you. No problem at all and people who are listening to this would know that I absolutely fumbled that intro. <laughs> the power <laughs> of editing. It took about three tries before I was like, yes, th- this is what I want to say. I know words. I know English. With the magic of editing, you'd have got away with it. Exactly. But you know what? Transparency, honesty, that is not our tagline. But you know what? We're going to run with <laughs> It's a new year. It's a new Red Panda. But how are you doing tonight? I am doing very well. And I actually want to say yes. Thank you. I'm, I'm really, really honoured to be your first guest or your first episode in 2024 so yeah no I'm doing really well thank you I'm doing really well at the time of recording I'd had this cold and bug for a couple of weeks but I was saying to you before we press record I've started to feel pretty much 90% human again now so I'm good to go I'm good to go it honestly is just the time of year I think because if anyone out there has listened to a couple of episodes ago I think it was like our hallmark reviews of the bad Christmas films you can definitely hear I am completely bunged up and that is a nightmare, isn't it? See, when you're recording and you plan well in advance, but you know what? Illnesses and seasonal flus, they do not wait for you. They do not wait for podcasters. But you know what, though? I actually kind of like that. You know, when you've listened to a podcast for so long that you know the podcaster's voice and you can tell there's a variation, so you know they've recorded with a cold and the fact that they've continued to do it to get that content out. I think it's also, like I said, you get to know that person that the way their voice sounds and you just know straight away if they've had a cold, got a cold or feeling slightly under the weather. Because it always reminds me of, and I don't know if you've seen this episode of The Simpsons, but it's always the scene I think of where Homer wants to go to Duff Gardens, which is like this huge beer amusement park, and he ends up eating a dodgy sandwich, and he still wants to go, but he's turning blue, he's shivering, he's like really really sick, and he's in the car tooting the horn going, musk get to Duff Gardens and that's how I feel see when I have to record for a podcast episode and it's like yeah maybe you should take a break maybe you should you know set this one out and obviously if I was really under the weather I wouldn't do it but it always reminds me of that just being like no the people need me I have to podcast. It's funny isn't it I'm sure we'll probably talk about this in what you framed this episode around but it is true yeah I think as a podcaster you shouldn't be afraid to make sure you take time for yourself I think yeah absolutely. Oh no definitely Of course, before we go into the main discussion of this episode, because let's face it, I am really excited to jump into this with you. It is, of course, going to be a discussion about not only our journey as podcasters, but as well what we've learned, what we've picked up, our secrets of the trade, as it were, casting chats, if you will. (laughs) <laughs> by pulling back the curtain of this very fickle industry, of course, yeah, <laughs> the indies here. But before we jump into that, and I am really excited to be talking about this today with you especially, this is a very special episode because not only is it the first episode of 2024, which again is absolutely fantastic, but at the same time, if you have listened to our previous announcement, you'll know that we are doing this not as ourselves, I mean technically as ourselves, as casting views and chat tsunami but we are also doing this under a brand new group called the pod pack collective try saying that three times yeah we didn't think about that did we <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to say, whenever we are DMing one another or we're in the group chat, it's always the pod pack or it's the collective. I feel as if pod pack collective saying it several times. In fact, see, in all honesty, it's a bit like, you know, Beetlejuice. If you say it three times, we'll just all appear yeah. with microphones and we'll yeah. just be saying, oh, do you want to record an episode? I was like, mm-hmm, yeah, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> it's like, you know, when you see actors in programs doing a warm up vocal, 
vehicles and they're saying like red lorry, yellow lorry and stuff like that, you'll be saying pod pack collective, pod pack collective, pod pack collective, pod pack collective. There's some uh, subliminal advertising there as well, yeah. What was that? The pod pack collective? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, the pod pack collective. Absolutely. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, the pod pack collective is a group of indie podcasters, including myself, the amazing casting views, as we <laughs> discussed, the Review It Yourself podcast, Nerd Nostalgic as well, Two Girls, One Reusable Cup podcast, and last but certainly not least, the Seismic Cinema podcast. All of them absolutely fantastic podcasters. And I'm not just saying that because you're on Dan as well. <laughs> you know, I just want to point that out, not just saying that because you're here. No, you're right. I mean, obviously, I've known you now. So this is going into my third year. And I think it's so recorded tomorrow night. I'm recording an episode to go out over Christmas. And I think you were my first guest on my show that I had. And yeah, we've spoken for like over two years now Luke is just one of the most uh, nostalgic is just one of the most super positive people and yeah I had him on the show well I've had him on the show once but we talk all the time Seismic Cinema I, I really got to know this year or, or last year now and had them on mine I've been on theirs and I've been in and around sort of conversations with yeah Review It Yourself and the Two Girls podcast you know and just in our Twitter DM chat gelled straight away with everyone didn't it it's, it is a really good bunch of people yeah I'm not going to lie, I'm actually so surprised at how well we've clicked together. And I'm not saying that as a kind of, oh, pat myself on the back here, but when we all came together, although individually, I wouldn't have invited a terrible or very hostile podcast on to begin with. But the fact was, when everyone started talking and now it's become almost like a regular checking your DMs for the group. Also, what's important to say is there is, and when I say disagreement, I'm not talking about arguments, but it's not like we'll think the same there's been disagreements in recent weeks about certain entertainment programs and stuff but it's all taken in really good manners and what i'm trying to say by that is we aren't necessarily all people that all think the same thing and that's why we're, we're all together and get on well everyone's got different or we have had varying views on things but it's all done in a brilliant way and conversational way oh yeah absolutely as you said we've had a very passionate discussion about a certain tv show that's been on not naming any names who could that be who who could that be yeah yeah, who could that be? Who knows? Who could that be? The fact is, as you said, that we do have our own opinions on things, but we're never confrontational about it. Like, if someone doesn't like something, they'll make it vocal. But at the same time, the whole point of the Podpack Collective is a group of us indie podcasters trying to create a more positive space within the indie podcast community. And don't get me wrong, the indie podcast community as a whole is absolutely fantastic. Like, I genuinely think that it is one of the nicest online communities I've ever been a part of and to have this almost concentrated group of them look from the Nerd Nostalgic podcast, absolutely fantastic podcaster, brimming with positivity. I still need to get him on. That is my New Year's resolution, to get him on for an episode because I keep saying to him, I want to get you on for an episode for an interview or just in general. Sean from Review It Yourself I've had him on for a couple. I've had him, ironically enough, talking about podcasting, talking about Star Trek as well. The Two Girls, One Reusable Cup podcast. Yeah, Beth and Marie, I need to get an episode sorted with them because that's another podcast I've said, yeah, I need to have you on. And then I have kind of put it on the to-do list and never ticked it off. So really need to get on that. And again, I need to get Seismic Cinema on because I was on theirs for a... I I think it was a Mandalorian episode ranking. I think it was only for season one and two at the time, but absolutely fantastic podcasters. Absolutely, you know, lovely guys. Everybody's lovely in the group, to be honest. Everybody, there's not one person, and again, I'm not just saying this for legal reasons, but there's not one person that I would not say like, oh, don't check out their podcast. No, no, no. If you've heard the names of these podcasts, do check them out. Clearly after this episode, of course, listen to this episode and then go check them out. Out, but they are part of the Podpack Collective and we're hoping that we will be able to really spread our message and what we're about as podcasters, as people and I'm really looking forward to how we get on but see without any further ado, will we just jump into talking about all things podcasts? Absolutely, let's do it. And as always, you guys know the drill by now, we will be right back 
after these messages. Welcome to Shatsunami, a variety podcast that discusses topics from gaming and films to anime and general interests. Previously on Shatsunami, we've analysed what makes a good horror game, conducted a retrospective on Pierce Brosnan's runs James Bond, and listened to us take deep dives into both the Sonic and Halo franchises. Also, if you're an anime fan, then don't forget to check us out on our sub-series, Chatsunani, where we dive into the world of anime. So far, we've reviewed things like Death Note, Princess Mononoke, and the hit Beyblade series. If that sounds like your cup of tea, then you can check us out on Spotify, iTunes, and all good podcast apps. As always, stay safe, stay awesome, and most importantly, stay hydrated. Fancy taking a humorous trip down a random topic each week? You do? Well, you're in luck. Casting Views, presented by me, Dan, and a host of guests, bring you just that. With topics from the world of entertainment, science, sport, and everyday life, there's bound to be a topic that's going to inform and amuse. Catch Casting Views every Sunday on all listening platforms now. So let's talk about podcasting, which I know, it's shock horror. I'm sorry I had to spring that on you at the last minute, Dan. I've got all my notes about the Christmas movies. I thought that's what we were on here for. but No, no, that's next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the end of 2024, Satsu and Dan's problem. <laughs> oh, and it wasn't about the Mass Effect trilogy, which you promised me you were going to do. Oh, okay, all right. I mean, if it's still on Game Pass in 2024, I will play it and I'll need to get an episode so done with you right everyone you've heard that you've heard that everyone yeah see if you hear scribbling in the background that's not me that's my red panda lawyer furiously drafting the contract for that episode i'm waiting for mass effect month i'm waiting for it that's all i'm saying honestly at this stage i can't do it justice but soon that's all i'll say <laughs> soon as, as long as i play the games first <laughs> But going back to podcasting, you and I, of course, have talked about our journey, our experiences with the medium and how we both started. I mean, did we both start at relatively similar times? I think you're up to a year ahead of me. So I've just, well, I turned two, as it were, in September 23. Yeah, I think you're right then, because we turned three in November. But to be fair, though, it sounds silly to say, but considering how 2020 and 2021 went in terms of years they practically just blurred together didn't they? Yeah, yeah. Because I think one of my friends made this joke when I fumbled one of the years talking about a film and I think I said the 20-somethings and I feel as if that just summarises the 2020s perfectly so far I mean we're not even halfway through the 2020s and yet we're yeah, saying oh it's the 20-somethings because the first couple of years have been an absolute blur in terms of obviously the lockdowns, the pandemic and things like that. But see from when you started podcasting and then you have evolved, of course, to your two-year podiversity. I remember the name there. I was like, was it anniversary (laughs) podiversity? I I was nearly forgetting that there. But have you felt there's been a change in the way you podcast? I think the biggest thing is more the confidence around doing it. I think for at least sort of six months, or at least I'd say the first year, there was a huge amount of, I kind of want to say imposter syndrome going on in the sense of I also kind of got in, a, in another group of American podcasts, a really good bunch of people who are super supportive and like I was listening to them. And one of the things I want to say is if you are starting out or you're fairly new is you should never compare yourself to other podcasts. But I was listening to them and thinking, I don't sound as good as that have I got I don't see I've got my content is like that but yeah it's just that what's the word is that imposter syndrome it is a negativity sort of creeping in you know I'm, I'm sure a lot of us are but I'm my own worst critic but I think over time yeah the kind of the confidence and I just really really enjoy it I always have done but for a period of time it felt it was like a second job because it is I think people don't realize especially if you're doing it weekly and you're trying to plan ahead the amount of effort that goes into producing a weekly podcast but yeah yeah, I think the confidence I've got, I think the friends, the, the friendship I've made and the support I get from the wider community, it's just meant I'm a lot more, or I've been a lot more um, sort of headstrong in choosing subjects and thinking, yeah, I'll, I'll run with that. That's going to be a good topic and sort of starting to branch out a little bit in terms of from what I have done to try and evolve. I think that's now the confidence is breeding evolution now, I think, in the pod. No, I totally agree with you there in terms of when you were talking about the self-confidence 
Lawrence thing because I think, and I've spoken about this before, but I do think there is a somewhat stigma, especially nowadays, about podcasting because it's almost been overrun by a lot of celebrities and influencers, you know, people who just turn on a mic and obviously because they have whole teams behind them and everything, they don't really have to put much effort into it themselves. But when you compare them versus us in the indie podcasting sphere, there is a stark difference and I think that a lot of people conflate the two and they don't realise it's like a journey of self-confidence because I totally agree with you. For me, if anyone out there is brave enough and you want to listen to how I podcasted when I began, because I did it live for the first 50 episodes, I want to say, over on Twitch and oh my god, I was absolutely terrified. You can hear it in my voice. I was just like, oh, hello, welcome to Chatsunami. <laughs> Please don't hurt me. Now, I obviously wouldn't say I'm perfect by any means. I've still got a long way to go, but I feel as if I've grown somewhat in the way that I do the show, the way that I talk about certain topics and things. There's definitely that growth that comes with podcasting. But when you compare it to people like, for example, celebrities or high profile people who come on and they've obviously had more experience behind a mic or on camera. So do you feel as if that is the case that a lot of people seem to hold podcasters to a very high standard in that regard? I think so. I think so. But I do think in the indie world, though, there is that understanding. And I think everyone is is super supportive. I think there have been some podcasts I listen to where even I've said all the audio sounds a bit like maybe they had a, a different microphone at the start. But you listen through that because I was thinking, well, I want to listen to that person. I want to listen to the content. I think there can be if people are just searching around. I think it's a lot harder for the indies to make a name and to get out there, which is one of the reasons for the pod pack collective to help each other promote each other but i think i've been okay in that i mean i fortunately do look out and you see the posts about the one star club on reviews and i've avoided that so far but i know i think when i do get that even though it's three years in it will still be kind of a gut blow and i do think probably those are comparing it to like your slick big budget celebrity podcast because i have to say one thing that annoyed me about getting into the one star review club wasn't so much the fact that I got it like I was a bit bummed out don't get me wrong but see if you do get a one star you know because I feel as if it's inevitable the more you grow as a podcaster and I mean personally for me I do not think that casting views deserves anything below a five star that's just my personal preference but I remember when I got my first one star review and do you know what I was most annoyed about the fact that I saw all of these people on Twitter slash and all these places saying oh look at this funny review I got oh you know and they had a long block of text and it was the most ridiculous ridiculous reasons oh I don't like your voice or oh I don't like the way this podcast is going into certain topics and things I got nothing I just got one star oh, really oh what is it the same Mrs. Doubtfire it was a run by one starring <laughs> somewhere yeah, yeah. and I was raging because I'm like I can't turn that into content yeah constructive criticism people exactly I mean I'm not going to clap because that would blow out some people's eardrums but you know that and be more of the emoji clapping yeah. Absolutely right. And the thing is, I'm not expecting everyone to love my podcast, right? I know it won't suit some people. I know the content won't be enjoyable to everyone. I think what people have to understand is, you know, if a podcast is a year or 18 months old, there's a person behind it and you don't know how they're feeling. Like, I think to clarify or to elaborate on what I said to your first question about how I think I've changed, is like, I know a lot of people say this, but when I first created Casting Views, I honestly didn't expect more than a handful of people in my immediate sort of vicinity to listen to it. I honestly didn't. It was just something I wanted to do. Then people did start listening and that made me nervous because I'm thinking, well, I've got people listening now. Now I have to carry on or not carry on, but I have to make this a good listen. And that then puts the extra pressure on you. We've all got jobs. We've all got families. We've all got things going on. And I'm not saying it's necessarily an excuse to just put anything out there, but I think that's what I'm trying to say is that don't be put off if you did get some negativity around it, because I think sometimes some of these 
one star things there's a possibly a bit of spite or malice in it i'd welcome if somebody said something to me like you know if, if you messaged me and said oh in your latest episode i didn't think this worked i didn't think that worked as you said brilliant let me know if you think there's something wrong but there's people behind this who are putting themselves out there like i'm not saying i'm not a social person but if you'd have said to me five years ago that i'd be putting myself out there in a podcast i'd have laughed at you because I, I would have said there's no way i'm doing that and you know yet here i am enjoying it but there's still that element of yeah i hope people like it you know i hope people like me i hope people like it it's not something you expect to be so personal and i know that sounds such a weird thing to say that oh it's a podcast where you're talking about pop culture for example like you and i talk about films gaming but at the same time we also dive into a lot of relatively serious topics as well and not only are we putting ourselves out there as you said but we're putting our opinions out there our beliefs our feelings on it and that can get quite personal when you're sharing your own experience because I think a lot of people although granted we at Chats and Ami anyway my co-host and I do try to put a funny spin on a lot of things there are moments where we do bring it back we try to be a little more serious for certain topics and things but at the same time that's kind of leaving us vulnerable for what we believe in what we say what we think because we're never going to hide it we're never going to say oh we think that this is great blah 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 when we clearly don't I mean I've had some and again I say hot takes relatively hot takes in the context of things but I think it's something that a lot of people don't really consider I suppose when they go into podcasting because speaking about experience going into I always remember when I started the podcast and I think the listeners who have already heard this story will be sick to the back teeth of it but when I started I did it on Twitch I did it as a kind of side project because Twitch streaming was essentially my escapism during the lockdown where I went on stream I talked to people I played games and then I thought you know what I love the talking aspect not so much the gaming aspect and then I saw my friends do podcasts and I thought you know what maybe I'll put my hand into this and see in all honesty like Chats and Ami genuinely started started as a side project that I thought you know what we'll see how it goes but I'm not going to put a lot of effort into it and then as you said the more and more your podcast grows and it's especially the case with indie podcasts the more and more it grows the more you think oh I've got to put more effort and consideration into this podcast and it is weird to think when people I don't know if you've had this as well when people message you and they say oh I loved such and such an episode or they said oh it's a great episode episode and you're kind of sitting there and it's not someone you know in real life it's someone you've either met through podcasting or it's a mutual acquaintance of the podcasting community do you ever feel quite weird when you hear that like I mean in the best way possible but do you ever feel like huh not what I expected yeah when somebody messages me and, and says oh, I really like the episode or, or just asks a question about it I love it like I said I'm not expecting it and I could go 100 episodes and if nobody does message me or comment I'd be fine with that but it kind of actually is quite touching because like you said the 45 minute hour and a half episode you put out is 45 minutes an hour and a half to someone but for you it's probably been two weeks in the planning and the making and the recording and the editing and you put it out and yeah it is a creation of yours and if I've got someone to listen and then feel compelled to message me I just think that's the best thing in the world what I'd say as well is I, I absolutely think if you are in the podcasting or think about getting into it the positivity you get back if you put it in is just second to none so I made it a thing of mine if I found a new podcast I'm not going to say necessarily I've not done it to every single one but when I've found a podcast I've really liked I will message them and just say look and I think I might have done it with you I know I've done it with a couple of others I will message them and say look I'm not expecting anything back but I just want to say I've listened to a few episodes of your podcast it's brilliant really enjoying it you know keep up the excellent work just because I feel I know what it means to me when I get that comment I don't mean it to sound patronizing or condescending but I think for the independent creators, just knowing that someone's listened to it and has felt compelled to write in just means a lot to me. So I, I just make sure I return the favour. These people are spending hours each week putting out content for free that you're enjoying. So the least I can kind of do is say thank you. And yeah, I'm really enjoying it. No, I do the exact same thing. I have to say there's nothing better than see when you listen to someone's podcast and you think, oh, this is pretty good. And then you message them later on and say, oh, I love so and so 
episode or, oh, I thought that your series on XYZ was great because it's actually a great way. And again, I'm not saying to do this superficially. Genuinely listen to the people's podcasts that you're reaching out to here, but it is really amazing how that one message can brighten up someone's day because I have to say it brightens up my day as well. I totally agree with you. But what I also love is the fact that it can help forge new relationships with other podcasters. And what I mean by that is just the fact that you can reach out to other indie podcasters and you might look at their followers or such and you think, oh my God, they've got thousands of followers. How am I supposed to approach them? And you know what? See, most of the time, whenever I've approached a podcaster who maybe has more followers than me or less followers, personally to me, it doesn't really matter. And I'm sure it's the same for yourself. But the fact that when you reach out and you talk to them, at the end of the day, it's just another creator like yourself who is wanting to get their message through the podcast out there and to be told, you know, oh, your podcast is amazing or, oh, I really enjoyed it. It can mean the world to them. And I know, as you said, it certainly means the world to me. And the fact is that the podcast community, and I don't know if you've noticed this, especially on Twitter slash X, but you start to see the same people pop up within the community. Have you noticed that? There's obviously the prolific creators that are always there. And I think you do surround yourself, as you said, you will follow people that you like and that are on the same wavelength as you. And yeah, I think we all kind of mix in similar circles, don't we? It's just the degrees of closeness we get to other podcasts without, you know, which is why sort of forming a group like this has been great. Because as I said earlier, you know, I was very close and chatty to yourself and nerd nostalgic. I'd started being in around because I think of my relationship or proximity to the two of you with a couple of the others. And then we've joined this group and you then get to mix more with a couple of others I might not have even had spoken to before. And I think this is exactly it. Things like this are, are, are key. And like I said, the positivity and reaching out to people just helps you expand that net of contacts and support. I can't remember if it was you I was saying this to, or maybe it was Sean from Review It Yourself, but I was essentially saying how the fact is that we do talk to each other quite a lot over DMs or over tweets through comments and things like that. And this practically cuts out, not in the middleman, but you know, it practically brings that podcasting relationship to the next level, if that makes sense, in the sense that we are all basically talking to each other anyway, so why not come together as this group and, yeah, try and make an impact, which I have to say, to be honest, even without the Podpack Collective, I think you guys are doing absolutely fantastic on your own. If I had to think of a indie podcaster who's made a big impact, I genuinely would say either yourself or, as I said, Nerdstalgic, but review it yourself, two girls, one reusable cup, and Seismic Cinema. I think all you guys really just have such a great impact on the indie podcasting community as a whole. Thank you very much. I'm right back at you. And I think this is exactly why when you came to me or you mentioned that you're going to do this, I said, absolutely, I'd help you in any way. Because as I said, there's another group I'm in. The only reason I got into that, I think, was, again, talking about the positivity was I'd reached out to, it was Antonio at the Cultworthy, I think. And to link back to something you said earlier, he had done at the time, like a personal recount of a story about him from his childhood. And it resonated with me. So I messaged him and then there was another podcast that they've been on a hiatus for a while, but Unchef, Brendan at Unchef. And I remember messaging him and then they were putting a group together. And because I'd reached out to a couple of them, I think this is how it went. They invited me in. And like you said, everyone in the pod pack are all brilliant in their own right, and really successful. But what doing this does is just supporting each other. So there'll be times everyone does it. There'll be times when we're feeling a bit down or unsure about something. So what better to have a group of people where you put it in and we will be supported, but there will also be the subjective bit. Have you thought about this or what about this? And that's what this is. You know, just because you see a podcast that's successful or you you look at them and you think, oh, they must be mega successful, doesn't mean that they don't need support from time to time. Oh, no, I completely agree with that. And it's especially the case with newer podcasts as well, when they see someone with tons of listeners 
listens or tons of followers. And I have to say, that doesn't always equal success. And you know, that's not to detract from anyone who does have all of those aspects. But at the same time, it is that case of, I have to admit, I sometimes do feel guilty doing this when I put up a milestone or something saying, oh, I've got so many plays, you know. And on the one hand, I'm proud of how I've advanced as like a podcast show and everything. But on the other hand, I don't want other people to think that because I've reached this milestone and I've got comments where people have been like, oh, I've only got a thousand plays or I've only got a couple of hundred. I see the fact that whenever I see those particular tweets, I always do my best to try and comment on them to say that is absolutely fantastic because it is. I don't think new podcasters and people outside the podcasting sphere, you know, listener only types might not know is no matter whether you're at a hundred, a thousand or even a million listens, it's your own personal journey and not everybody's going to follow the same milestones. You know, I'm not going to get a million listens by the end of the year. I mean, that would be lovely if anybody wants to boost us to a million, you know, that would be amazing. I think there's a difference between confidence slash celebration tweets and arrogance. And I think anyone that knows you knows that you're doing it because you are genuinely celebrating that milestone. The thing with me is I kind of schedule the the pods. I very rarely, or I keep forgetting to look at the insight section of my host. And I've changed so many times that mine keep resetting. But I think I remember when I got like a hundred listens, I was saying to my wife, I was over the moon. And, And you do, you celebrate. And I think it's good to celebrate these things. And I think there is a difference between being happy and celebrating an achievement to it being bragging or arrogance. And I think it can come through if you're doing that latter one. And like I said, I don't think anyone ever begrudges anyone from supporting. All I've seen when, say, you've put posts like that or other posts is just really supportive comments. And because I think everyone loves to see it, as in loves to see somebody do well. Well, most nice people like to see people doing well. Yeah, because again, this is very rare, at least in my experience anyway, for the indie podcast community. But there have been one or two comments where you do look at them and not that they're negative, but it's more the case that they almost begrudge other people for reaching the milestones. And I'm not talking about anyone in particular here, but I've seen a lot of people say, oh, great, everybody's getting listens but me, or oh, everybody's got a successful show but me. And the thing I want to stress here is it's not about toxic positivity. You know, that way where it's just like the permanent smile. Even if you are going through a hard time, you try to put on a positive attitude and try and mask that. I do think there has to be some form of sincerity there. But when you're part of one particular spectrum or the other in terms of how you're feeling that day, it's okay to feel as if you're happy or prideful about your podcast. And alternatively, if you're disappointed or even sad about your podcast, it's okay to reach out to others. And as you said, you made a fantastic point that with the Podpack Collective, we have been messaging one another in the group chat saying, oh, I don't know about this, I don't know about that, or, you know, wanting tips or advice on this or that. And I think that is fantastic to have, like, a support network. That's something I would recommend. And again, this goes to all indie creator spaces. It's not just for us as podcasters, but I wouldn't recommend trying to bring people down, you know, and obviously this is very rare, but it's just it's not constructive because I feel as if if one of us succeeds then we're practically all succeeding because the more high profile indie podcasters we get up there the more that us other indie podcasts down below you know we can look up to that and say this is achievable and I absolutely love supporting other indie podcasts whether they've got five followers whether they've got a million followers you know maybe not a million that's too much but you know what I mean yeah for me it almost don't even look necessarily at the followers that the podcast got is if they are approaching me I just want to help them because as a human you know like I said I've had Antonio from the cult every I've had him early on facetiming me because I had audio issues and I didn't know how to do it and he took me through how to do some things in audacity you, you've seen like the artwork I do as Justin from the movie why I don't give him anything that I, I keep saying look if you've got a patreon I'll donate to it or something but this is what I'm saying my intro and outro music is done by another pod and and this is how supportive the group is I mean I hope you don't mind me saying but you know when you upgraded your microphone recently in the chat you put some questions about that and yeah there was a conversation around that and this is what I'm saying we can't know everything 
all the time. I sometimes think I know very little about little amount of things. So the wider the net of people you've got that, that you can talk to, the experiences that we've had, the knowledge we've got. You know, I'm not saying that you might ask me a question, I might give you an answer. If you say, do you know what? Yeah, I take on board, but I'm not going to do that. Yeah, I'm not going to be upset because in the end, you're a great person and it's your podcast. It's your brand. You know what you want to do with that. But you can at least get that off that question off your chest and see what comes back. And that's what I'm trying to say is it's about there are people who have been through it. If you've hit a problem, if it's say you're starting up a podcast and you hit a problem, so many people have trodden that path before you. So why not put yourself out there and reach out and learn from other people's mistakes and experiences? You know, it actually reminds me of, and I can't believe I'm thinking back to university here, but... It's only a couple of years ago for you, isn't it? Well, let me count. I mean, oh God, it's like seven or eight years, which... <laughs> we'll keep going for me, so we'll, yeah. we'll leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just have an existential meltdown in the corner where you're like, yeah, first time, yeah. <laughs> but I always remember one of my uni lecturers had a tale about, and this is probably quite a common one, that, you know, a lot of teachers and tutors and things like to tell their students, but he was talking about how there was this one student that was really afraid to put up his hand because he didn't want to look stupid in front of his peers, and then, long story short, he eventually eventually put up his hand and he said, listen, I'm sorry, I don't understand this at all. Can you talk me through it? And then I think the tutor turned around and said, well, does anybody else understand the issue? Can anyone else explain? And nobody in the room could because all of them were silent and they also didn't want to project the fact that they didn't know what was going on or about the topic. It just it's rooted, I'm sure there's a proverb or something about this, but it's rooted in the fact that you might not know about something and this is something I always do and I always get a mix of reactions depending on how well it takes off but at the end of the day if you don't know something there is genuinely no shame whatsoever in asking other people about it because I feel as if that is something that is potentially I wouldn't say demonised but you know there's a lot of people who because they're experts in that field I felt as if especially when it came to upgrading my microphone I have to say there were some people who were very helpful there was a podcaster I talked to on Twitter called Danny Brown who was absolutely fantastic he absolutely bared with me when I was asking him about XLR mics and things like that because I had no idea what I needed you know because I was used to the USB mics and it's all about learning but then you get some people who are either quite impatient you know or they're like oh for goodness sake you need this you need that you need blah 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 and it can get quite overwhelming when you get people like that but as you said it's just it's the fact that as long as you have people there to support you that is just the most important thing i mean you know look at the elements of a podcast right the microphone so most people i assume will start out so when i started out i just bought a basic one off um, online retailer it was fine but then once I got into it I thought to myself no I want to change got one really didn't like it at all I probably didn't do enough research went back to the original one but I said no I still want to improve it did a lot more research asked a lot of questions of people got one I'm really happy with but like you said I know if I was to go to the XLR side of things I wouldn't have a clue where to start so now there are a couple of people yourself now included who I can go out and ask for opinions on the recording the site where you're going to record from host all these elements that as a newbie and even as a relatively experienced person if you've only ever used the same one the, the first time I changed podcast host was one of the most nerve-wracking things I did you know and when you boil down you, you say that all the things I've done in life and career and things like that but changing a podcast host had me really nervous because I you know it's something new to me and I hadn't been through it before editing audacity to me is probably like excel I use maybe five percent of it and so when you can get somebody who who shows you some tips and tricks and what you can do. It's, it's almost like a revelation and you get really excited that there's another string to your bow. So there's quite a bit of post-production tweaking I do and an element of me actually enjoys doing that because, you know, we've had the conversation before. I actually really love the editing part of the podcast process and it is about crafting something to be as good as you think you can get it. But Audacity, like I said, I'll probably use about 5% of it. So if there's anyone out there willing to teach me more, absolutely let me 
me now. Because I have to say, when I started editing, I didn't really know what I was doing for the most part. And then I got to grips with Audacity and I got semi-proficient at the basics. And I always remember one of my friends and co-hosts, Andrew, he was asking me for help on another project that we were working on. A soon-to-come-out D&D podcast called Stop, Drop and Roll Initiative. And we're really excited to get that out. But the only issue was that Andrew and all of his generosity said I'll help with the editing for it and I was like oh that's great that means I can focus on chats and amming and then of course he was messaging me asking me he's gonna kill me for saying this (laughs) apologies Andrew love you but he ended up asking me how do you do this how do you do that and it's amazing how it's things that because I've been editing the podcast myself for so long it's like second nature but when you're talking to someone else through it you're like oh right you do this you do that and you do take it for granted I have to say you're like oh yeah you just press that button and of course they're saying well what's this button what's that button and then you have to kind of go through it yourself and be like oh right is this or that so yeah there's definitely a lot to consider when you're going into podcasting but speaking of one thing you mentioned there when you talked about podcast hosts will we go into some slightly spicy and controversial territory here what controversial see have you got it's actually something you brought up when we were talking about recording this episode and it really sat with me for a good while honest to goodness if you want some podcasting philosophical musings just message casting views and honestly (laughs) what did i say now i'm worried about what i said to you (laughs) well it was more when we were talking about zencaster and you know glory be to zencaster (laughs) as we're recording it on zencaster but it was when you were talking about about potentially going on to the plan for Zencaster. So for anyone who doesn't know, Zencaster, and no, I'm not going to play the advert here, but Zencaster is a podcasting recording suite and it records two-track audio and I'm getting flashbacks to my reading of the ad. Essentially what it does is it was a fantastic tool for podcasters to be able to come on, record the podcast, and they even introduced a host feature which is something that I personally use. Now the controversy that came from that was the fact that now unless you host with them you have to pay to use their service and I have noticed there is a lot of companies, not just Zencaster I'm not going to just single them out but apps like Descript Podpage as well which I absolutely love, I've got a Podpage account there's so many that have popped up in recent years and they want to essentially take your money, that's a word. I think that's fair. <laughs> yeah, they want to take your money through subscription services and things like that, which I understand, you know, if it's a business, you want to raise money for the cost of running said service, but at the same time, it almost feels as if it's gatekeeping a little bit of what podcasters could potentially achieve. And I kind of know why Podpage did it, because from what I heard, I think their reason to stop their free plan was more to do with people taking advantage of it. A bad apple spoils the bunch and so forth. But have you noticed that though recently that there's been a lot more subscription services and monetization? Definitely. And, you know, as you said, I fully understand it. I mean, if you look at the amount of podcasts and podcasters now, the day it was coming and a couple of podcasts did call it out in groups I was in maybe over a year ago saying that the day of the a totally free podcast is going to disappear. I think it is a shame for certain things. I think it might be a barrier to some people. But yeah, I mean, as you said now, to record, you've got to pay. To host, there's a lot. I mean, I've moved to a free one. I think there's a thing I, I was saying to you beforehand about the insights. I don't think the insights I get from it are as good as the one I was on the paid one, but that's something I know I can live with for the fact that I'm at least getting that bit free. Pod page, as you said, I've got the subscription to it as well. I, I thought I'd do it for a year to see how it is, how it goes but I get it like you said I get it I get it I get it I think if I was starting out I think it would have given me bigger cause for concern but because I was 18 months in two years in for me it didn't feel like too much of a problem basically what I'm saying to myself is do it for the year and then compartmentalize it into six month chunks and say right six months at time where am I at you know how is it going do I go on to a different plan or do I try find a cheap alternative if there is a cost element but yeah I think it's just from the fact 
fact that podcasting just is so prolific now or it is so easy to get into isn't it yeah and i think going back to a point that i was kind of rambling on about earlier but i think that definitely has to do with the celebrity and popular influencers out there who and again i'll say what i've said before in episodes i don't begrudge people like that high profile people for starting the podcast i believe to an extent everyone has a right to start the podcast and feel as if that their voice is being heard on certain things but obviously there's the caveat of that where if they're doing it for malicious purposes if they're doing it for hateful reasons then no 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 get out of here i think the other thing is just because you see a podcast that's been around for a couple of years doesn't mean we're making money i was going to say a lot of money but it doesn't mean we're making money full stop i think so this is a thing this is where now a pastime you then start looking and say right now it's coming at a cost to me now if you boil it down it's still going to be cheaper than if you are an intensive gamer or you're always buying the latest technology or the latest iphones or, or cell phones etc but now there is a cost to it and for a lot of us it is a hobby it is a pastime it is a passion you know you do have those things to think about now because it does relate to something that i've said about streaming as well like especially with twitch streamers where a lot of people will see the more prolific streamers who gain i don't know ridiculous amounts of money and they've got thousands of views per stream and then of course someone who wants to get into streaming might say oh i want to do exactly the same thing and they do exactly the same thing they don't get the results and then they complain about well why am i not getting the same views same money same wealth and everything but i think you made a great point there it's the fact that podcasters especially we are not making at least in the indie sphere we are not making mega bucks doing this we are doing this at least for indie podcasters and obviously i can't speak for every single indie podcaster out there but i mean not all of us make a lot of money off of this we're doing this because we enjoy it we enjoy the company that we've somehow cultivated over the years for me i was just very stubborn and i just kept messaging you and yeah we do this because we love it essentially we do this because this is a pastime that we are passionate about and i mean for me personally i feel as if it's helped my self-confidence grow greatly over the years but again there's that kind of misconception through some people seeing these other podcasters and maybe companies as well thinking well how much is joe blogs the podcaster going to be willing to spend on this and that's the thing though because for pod page if you get a subscription to that i mean that is quite expensive i mean personally for me i would say it's a worthwhile investment for what you get out of it but if you think of if you're paying for that then you're paying for zencaster you're paying for a subscription to descript because this is something i'm curious to hear your thoughts on the fact that there's a lot of emphasis on ai driven content for podcasts now have you noticed this going around yeah well in the sense of when i was needing to look at possibly a new recording platform i do see wherever you look ai is touted as the feature now everywhere and it's not something i'm i'm not saying that i'm against it i'm not i'm not saying that at all just at the moment it's not something for me and kind of sorry i do want to go back to something you said earlier because i know i'm going to keep forgetting if i don't but just to wrap up a few things that you you've said here and i will come back to the ai but you know like when you were talking about celebrating posts and people seeing others and saying successful or begrudging in the end also I think now more than ever, you do also have to put the work in for promoting your podcast. And I know you do a great job at that. So, you know, when you are saying, oh, you've reached a milestone, well, that's due to the hard work you're putting in because, you you know, you do some, it was your Lord of the Rings months recently, the trailer you did for that. I mean, that was just brilliant. The artwork and the tweeting. I know it sounds funny, but it's a lot of effort to keep on top of that. I think for me, a resolution for me this year is going to be, I think I do have to probably step up my social game a little a bit my marketing element a bit and yeah so i do think you've got to be prepared to put in that work which you do now the other thing was about yes things will always happen so you know i had about a couple of months back i had like a month from hell with tech and recording you know it felt like everything that could go wrong did go wrong for me for a few weeks but like i said it's about you've got to bounce back from it and reach out to the support and regarding the paying for things i think it's fine but what you've got to remember is what are you doing this for and when you talk about 
about, again, comparing yourself to other people. Look, if I have an episode that goes viral and if I was to get a million followers and if I was to make mega bucks, I'm not going to say I'd turn that down. Absolutely. I think we all have had that dream. But why are you doing it? I'm doing it because I love creating that content. I love doing what I'm doing. I love talking to the people. So deep down, that's why often even for me, you know, like if I've had a bad month of numbers, there's a little voice over my shoulder and it's my wife. She keeps saying, but you do remember why you're doing this because you love doing it. And it is a mental sort of slap around the face to say, yeah, I'm doing this because I enjoy doing it. And then whatever happens around it, let it happen, positive or not so positive. I think that was something I want to say that that for me, I think that's really important to remember too. <laughs> now coming back to the AI side of things. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's an evolution, isn't it? And ironically, in about a week's time, I'm going to be recording an episode about AI. And this is going to feature because it just feels like it's everywhere, isn't it? AI is the buzzword. And again, it's not for me at the moment. I do love having total control about what goes in and how I craft an episode that, again, it'll be when people that are far better at it than me can help me understand what it can do for me. Yeah, ever since AI has come into the equation, I feel as if a lot more companies have definitely put their foot down and gone, oh yeah, we need to focus particularly on the AI aspect. And I have to say, not to call them out overly, but I know good pods were in a minor kerfuffle about this. I don't know if you saw that. That AI? Well, they were putting up descriptions of people's podcasts. The thing is about it, and again, I've got no proof that they did it or they didn't, but let's face it, reading my description, and I think I posted a few in the pod patch. Yes, you did, yeah, yeah. And you were reading them and you were just like, there is no way. Is that me? <laughs> yeah, because I can't remember who it was. I think it was Sean, actually, from it Review was, yeah. Yourself. Yeah, he was reading his, and I can't remember what his said, but it was something that was completely different compared to what he was talking about. I mean, did they say something about gardening or something? I don't Do you know, know what? I think it might have done. I think it yeah. might have done. And for anyone who doesn't know, Review it Yourself does a lot of film reviews, and they do their sub-series, Defend It Yourself, and things like that, and Visit It Yourself, you know, some great sub-series. But let me tell you, there is no Garden Force or Garden Yourself side series or anything. Well, let's see what 2024 brings. True, true. Sean, if you're listening to this, yeah, get that trill out and <laughs> start digging for podcast ideas. But yeah, it was just, it was absolutely bizarre. We were all laughing in the chat going, what the hell was this? Going back to the idea of AI and podcasting, I think there is potential there, but at the same time, I don't think, and again, I could be completely wrong because I don't use AI for my own podcast, but it certainly shows, <laughs> I have to say, but for a lot of these plans and things, especially with Zencaster, they've got a ridiculous ridiculously priced subscription where it's like for so much money a month it's like a couple of hundred a month I think where the software will scan through your content generate clips for you and then it will post it on social media which I think is a fantastic idea that thing that sounds really cool actually yeah I mean I won't be paying that price yet but that is a really cool feature yeah because I think a lot of hosting platforms and things like that I think they're aiming in that direction that they want to streamline the process of content creation because I mean even Headliner I absolutely love Headliner for yes, anyone yeah. who doesn't know that's an app that when you publish an episode it automatically publishes onto YouTube and I think that's fantastic it's a great program admittedly a little bit laggy but it's still a great program but that's even got a subscription service and you're kind of like great here we go again with the subscriptions and I get that they have some very hungry podcast children to feed at home and everything and they have to keep the lights on but yeah it all adds up to that and as I said in terms of AI content it is good but at the same time because I don't know about you I get the messages about SEO content and things like that yes yeah 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 clear bots clear scammers and things like that where they're like oh we'll boost your visibility and everything and it's like no you won't you'll either take my money and run or you'll do such a obvious job of it that people will be like now hold on a minute Satsu didn't have a million listeners overnight there must be something that's going wrong here I think the message is ultimately look any hobby any pastime has a cost right whether it's as I said gaming if you fishing a sport there's always a cost right there's always a cost I think 
is what it gives you. So like I said, at the moment, I'm on a Zencaster plan. I've got to deal with it. So it's helped for the first six months. But as you said, there are some little things, extras that I'm getting from it that are helpful. Like I had an episode where, for whatever reason, a guest audio didn't download properly. But yeah, you can get the internet backup copies from them. There is a soundboard. And I know you can get a soundboard elsewhere. I, I think I used it for the first time in the episode you came on. I think I scared the hell out of you, didn't I, I think, with it. Oh, you did, yeah. 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 I still have yeah. nightmares about that, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know you can get soundboard elsewhere, but that's included in it. And it's actually helping me when I'm doing certain things. So I think what you've got to do is absolutely look at what you get for it and does it help and shop around. If you are a solo pod, there are choices where it's not going to cost you anything. And as I said, I'm on a free host. Microphones, I know people that have used almost like a headset they use for work, for Teams calls at work, and they've sounded really, really good. I think it's, you know, there is also also an element with what equipment you've really got. I guess what I'm trying to say is we should should have expected the age of the totally free ride to disappear but there are options out there and just see what the paid option gives you like i said i'm for now the level i'm at i'm gonna stay to the lower end of those because i'm still enjoying it more as a passion project i'm not gonna say hobby because i do love doing this thing you know more than anything if i had to stop doing it tomorrow i'd be quite upset but at the moment yeah i think if i see what the next evolution the big evolution of the podcast will be it might be right well i need something slightly different the ai for example who knows because you make a great point in fact no you don't make a great point you make several great points there (laughs) thank you the fact is that if you're listening to this and you're thinking should i get into podcasting you know is it going to be too expensive really as you said before the only thing you really need is some kind of computer or audio recording software that you can manage to record onto and then upload because i think and i could be wrong because it's been a while but i think you can potentially record through your phone if you have spotify for podcasters formerly known as anchor yeah that makes it very accessible for podcasters just to record on their phone and i have to say there's a lot of people who do say that they say oh i just record on my laptop or on the microphone on my earphones or even through my phone or you know you don't have to have expensive equipment like right now and i'm gonna give a couple of shout outs here and i swear to god this isn't sponsored or anything but right (laughs) now i'm using a sontronic mic and i have to say i'm enjoying getting to grips with it i also have a dji mic that i use for portable recording like when i did the acme comic-con episode i took those along what i actually do love seeing though see when i'm reading people's responses to tweets to say things like oh how did they evolve as podcasters how did they evolve as content creators i love it when they turn around and they'll say something like oh i only started on my phone or oh i only started in a really low-end microphone or whatever because the fact is and i've said this before but podcasting isn't a static thing. Podcasting is very much a dynamic thing. It is going to evolve. You're going to change over time, not just with your equipment. If you're confident enough and financially stable enough to upgrade your equipment, by all means, go for it. But don't go for something like the sure, insert letters and numbers here, type of microphones, or because don't get me wrong, the sure microphones look, pardon the pun, sure damn good. But at the same time, if you're just starting out you know you don't want to dive into the deep end too early just find your feet and find your community and as a kind of closing point to that and I will be asking for your answer Dan don't you worry but my advice for like new podcasters coming into the scene is take your time to find your community because it can be daunting as we've said throughout this episode it can be daunting to come into this new space and feel as if you're overwhelmed with people yelling at you about XLR microphones, what the best hosting platform is, or how you should market your podcast, because that is something that really irritates me. Sorry, slightly off topic, but I hate it when people try to offer like a silver bullet for podcasting. Because at the end of the day, I know, ironically enough, I'm giving advice and tips here, but my advice, and of course your advice, won't apply to everybody out there. And I cannot stand, see, when people go 
go on and they'll say, I think you should do X, Y, Z. That's going to guarantee that your podcast is going to be successful. But that doesn't take into account the type of podcast that you're producing. Like, for example, the marketing of a audio drama is not going to match up with a variety of podcasts like yourself or me. So there has to be that degree of nuance. But obviously the basics out there, like get a quiet space to record, learn the basics about editing, you know, that's all universal. But when you dive deeper into the success, it dangerously, and again, this isn't targeting anyone in particular, but it does skirt the edges between legitimate advice and snake oil advice. Yeah, because I'm going to be honest, fortunately, I haven't seen too much of that on social media lately, but I do remember about a year ago, it was prolific, wasn't it? Almost like, yeah, $100 course or, or whatever, and I'll teach you how to be the best podcaster you can. It might work for some people, but I would actually say, as you said, I mean, who am I to give advice out, right? But what I would say is, especially if you're starting up, yeah, you don't have to spend an absolute fortune. My first microphone, it was like 30 quid, 30 pounds, Amazon. And the thing is, when I go back to the first set of episodes, right, my episodes, they don't sound particularly great, but there's a couple couple of things there. One was, I think I did rush into it. I think I should have taken a bit more time to get used to it. And I think that's the key thing for me is get used to the process. But also, secondly, we evolve. And as good as I remember, I thought I sounded at the time. Yeah, I, I, was, about, I was nervous. I was fairly stiff. You could tell, you know, how I sounded. Almost linking back to your first question again about how it evolved. That's what I'm also saying is your podcast, your style, your attitude will change. So at the start, I was very script, not scripted, but in terms of what I wanted to say, I bought things. But in the last six, seven months, I've had the confidence to have more conversational podcasts, which is what I want to do. And I like to think it's come across as that. So things will change. Priorities will change. Needs will change. Just, I would say, do what you need to do at the start to be confident in yourself. Know what you want to do. If you've got an audience that you know you want to target, brilliant. Or if you know you've got a subject you want to target, just work on that. I think once you work on your own confidence, and the content, like you said, support, friendship, followers, listens, they'll come. But you've got to just be happy with what you're doing. I mean, not to coin the Field of Dreams quote to say record it and they will come. <laughs> but yeah. I would agree with that. It is definitely finding your feet as not just a podcaster, but as a person. Because one thing that I have to admit does semi-annoy me, and again, it's maybe not a purposeful thing, but this again goes for streaming, where although I don't show my face, at least as of 2024. I don't show my face when I'm podcasting or when I'm streaming. I usually use like a Red Panda avatar, A, because Red Pandas are cute. But at the same time, when I use that avatar, I don't portray myself as a character. And I feel as if a lot of people, when they're hiding behind the microphone like I am, they'll say, oh, I have to pretend to be like this person. I'm not a wacky co-host or, you know, a wacky character that has a very bold personality and I have to say in my experience anyway I feel as if people will burn out really fast if they kept that up whereas if you're just honest about who you are what your message is then it'll come through it'll definitely come through because people can tell listeners out there and I'm not just saying this because Chat Tsunami listeners are the best in the world next to casting views <laughs> listeners but people can tell they're intelligent enough to know that if you're putting on on a persona or a character just be yourself and I'm going to be brutally honest here the first couple of episodes they're going to be rough I scream every time someone says to me oh I'm listening to your podcast and then they send a screenshot of episode one and I'm like oh sweet Jesus no oh no please no but that's part of the journey right and that's part of the learning even it might be episode 120 or 101 might not be a great episode but we're going to have those times where it's not going to be quite right or something's going to go wrong or it's not going to be the most vintage episode. But we all go through that. Anything, even TV shows and movie franchises, there's always the elements where they drop the ball or something. But as long as you can bounce back from it and don't take it too personally and understand if, and again, this is if you genuinely think something's gone wrong, do you know why and can you work on it? I mean, the reason why I say if you genuinely think something is, I had an episode recently where 
where I had a tech issue beforehand. The audio, I was distraught when, because I had the first time guest on. It wasn't their audio, it was my audio. It wasn't brilliant because of a mistake that had happened. And I put a disclaimer at the start, etc. And I was talking to someone recently and they said, you know what, it didn't actually sound that bad. But to me, it was. And having that validation that they said, look, do you know what, it isn't actually that bad. Again, it's kind of a hammered home that just, you know, you are going to be your own worst critic. So as long as you are genuinely assessing yourself and if something does go wrong, what I learned from that was there was a few things that if, if I have a reset or there's an update or you change plan on an application, go into the settings and just make sure because it had been default for about 18 months and then my defaults in the application had changed. You know, it means I'd get on a few minutes earlier and I do double check. And you know, so that's a learning, but mistakes are going to happen. Not everything is always going to be the way you think it's going to turn out, but we live and learn, right? To coin another cliche phrase, but we live and learn. I have to admit, I've been through my fair share of mistakes with podcasting as well, because I don't want to feel left out. <laughs> But, oh, no, I, I totally know what you mean. It actually reminds me of something one of my friends and co-hosts, Vegas C, had told me. I think it might have been, it was either our third year anniversary episode or it might have been the Patreon exclusive episode. And no, that's not a cheeky wink, by the way, but cough, patreon.com forward slash chats and amicoff. I remember he was saying it's almost a bit like, you know, when you're very hypercritical about your own content, you say, oh, oh, it doesn't sound great, or, oh, this went wrong. And it's a bit like when you're driving a car and you make a mistake on the road, but you're driving with someone who has no idea how to drive a car. So you make a mistake and then you profusely apologise and say, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And then they'll turn around and go, what were you talking about? You know, I didn't notice anything because they're not as privy to this world as you or I might be. Really good point, really good point. And it goes back to what I said, for me, my podcast, is a real passion project and in my head I just want it to be the best I can and if I think I haven't I get really upset with myself about it but it's true what you're saying is I've said to a couple of people it might have been even someone in the collective at one point but I know I've said to a couple of people that look often people are listening there are certain podcasts I listen to because I like the hosts and it might be a subject or an episode on something I don't have as much interest in other episodes or other podcasts but I really like the host and so I'm listening to them so they might think they've had a bad episode. I'm enjoying listening to the host, the emotion they're putting through, the feeling they're putting through, if it's two or three people, the chemistry between them. So sometimes it's not even the content. You've got to remember that, like you said, or we've said throughout this, we're putting ourselves out there and sometimes it's that draws the people in. I mean, going back to making mistakes in the podcast, it is so easy to blame yourself for things that you might have had an oversight on or, you know, just some mistakes that you do as you say love and learn from because I remember I think it was for the two year anniversary episodes and I did it in person with again my very good friend Craigie C and we had such a good episode but the thing I felt brought it down was because we were trying to work using two separate microphones but what I didn't realise was the echo was so bad so his microphone was picking up me and it was a single track audio it wasn't split up so I was absolutely devastated at that because I was like it's such a good episode but the quality isn't what I wanted it and of course people were saying oh no it's great it's fine and I think now it still has like a couple uh, definitely over a hundred plays as of this episode but you know I was still annoyed at myself because I never picked up on it you know and it is something that you have to unfortunately come to terms with because otherwise you wouldn't have any content or an episode to put out and the only example like the very nuclear option where I didn't publish an episode because of its quality was when my friend and Andrew and I did an episode on the anime film Perfect Blue. To this day, it's one of my favourite episodes of all time, but what many people might not know out there is the fact that we had to re-record that entire episode because the audio quality was just that bad. And I think because we did that, 
that, we got a better episode out of it, both in terms of audio quality and just the discussion as a whole. So the thing is, and again, this will be one of my final points, I swear, but make mistakes. That's what I'm trying to get at here. Don't be afraid to make mistakes in podcasting. Don't be afraid to say, oh, maybe this podcast isn't perfect because I have to say, I don't know about you, Dan, but I am very much a perfectionist when it comes to editing and things. That's why I take so damn long to publish these episodes and I'll publish an episode and I'll feel like, oh my God, I am the worst podcaster in existence. I have put out a terrible episode. It's subpar. It's, you know, I've failed. I've brought dishonor to all of the podcasting ancestors I have out there. And then the weird thing is when you get that positive reinforcement of people saying, oh, I really enjoyed that episode or, oh, that's one of my favourite episodes. And I'm like, oh, well, that didn't seem as bad as I thought it would be. And again, it goes back to the idea of finding your audience, as it were. And it is going to take ages. It's going to take a long time if you have not got a public presence before going into podcasting. You are going to have maybe slight difficulties trying to get off the ground. But seriously, don't be dismayed at that. That, That's all I'll say. Don't be dismayed at having a rocky start, a rocky episode. Because let's face it, it's a badge of honour, isn't it? The one star club and the rocky episode a week or every so often. And like I said, look, the issues could happen at any point. So I think I had a pretty good run in terms of only when, say, I've changed microphone and you're getting used to the new equipment or it's got new software or how it acts with your laptop. And like I said to you, the month from hell I had with various things, that's come two years after I started. So maybe I just had a full sense of security going along. So it, it can happen anytime. And with tech and with internet based things, these things can always happen, right? It's again, it's just about trying to take it in your stride. And is there anything you can take from it? I think, I think there's one other really key bit of advice I would offer, especially for us podcasters based in the UK. If you are doing podcasts with people in the States or, or anywhere, just make sure you've clarified the time zone (laughs) you've remembered what the time zone difference is before you come to record yeah i cannot emphasize that enough i have to say some of my best episodes have been with people from oh goodness knows where like i had an amazing interview with a australian musician slash content creator i've talked to people from the states from canada from switzerland as well you know all of these absolutely amazing places but what I will say is I 100% agree with you for the love of God and make sure you know what time you're jumping into it because nobody wants to be binge watching I don't know the latest drama on Netflix and then you get a ping on your phone and it's like hey are we not supposed to be recording right now and you're like oh my god we are and then you have to run up and get set up. Especially with the amount of time zones in the States recently I've done it with a couple of people they've been in different time zones and then when you throw in a clock change and the fact that it's not universal around the world that some happen a couple of weeks later than others. I know it sounds like a silly thing, but it's, yeah, if you do do that regularly, yeah, just make sure you've written it down. Funny enough, I did a collaboration with the absolutely fantastic podcaster Runa Friedman-Watts from the Better Call Daddy podcast. And I remember when I was trying to schedule an interview with her, we were doing it through, I think it was like Google calendars or something. I remember when I put it through, it was coming up as, I think, one o'clock or two o'clock my time but it was coming up an hour before our time okay yeah although it wasn't really matching what the reality was that i was putting in the correct time for myself but for some reason google hadn't caught up yet so it was like oh no no you're still an hour behind for america and i was like no i'm not (laughs) google why would you make me lie like this (laughs) why would you lie we got it sorted and you know it's an absolutely fantastic episode in its own right but I was just so frustrated when it came to that and I totally agree with you that is a very good point unless you're a time traveller make sure you get your time sorted for that seeing that note speaking of time haha honestly Dan thank you so so much before you wrap up can I just say something do you want to say or shall I say to the listeners what you said about this podcast before we started talking about how long it would last well I said it would be over by Christmas which technically is true (laughs) Ha ha ha!
<laughs> he said, oh, we'll do a quick one. We'll do a quick one. I said, when the two of us start talking, it won't be a quick one. <laughs> you know what? That is a very good point. <laughs> I'm joking. No, I, I love it. It's always great talking to you. No, it's always a pleasure. So, and thank you for having me on. And yeah, I just, I think it's, it's a great thing that our conversations divert and digress like, like it has done. Always the case, to be fair. I always love the conversation part, to be honest, but I just hate when I go back to edit it and I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to have to spend ages editing <laughs> Which is no fault of either of us, but, you know, it keeps me off the streets. That's it. You know, if not, I would be in a hoodie. I'd be clicking my fingers, like, passing by. I don't know if that's, like, a gangster thing or a West Side Story thing. I never got to the end of it. You'll be breaking out into dance, yeah. I mean, those are the worst thugs. I mean, thugs with hand-eye coordination. I mean, come on. (laughs) Again, Jan, thank you so much for not only being the first episode of 2024, but also being the very first guest as part of the Podpack Collective. No, thank you, thank you. And before we wrap up and we shout out the amazing Podpack Collective members, don't worry, I'll do that. <laughs> Where can these lovely listeners at home find your content in particular? Pretty much on all the podcast platforms around. Just look for Casting View use you'll see a little cartoon image of me if i'm not on one that you know of let me know and i'll get myself on there so yeah if you want to do something lovely find a place where i'm on and follow me on there same with social media just look for casting views across all of them casting views pod at gmail.com if you want to drop me an email and yeah if i can just take a few seconds yeah i absolutely always looking for new guests to jump on i've got a monthly series now where i bring a guest on to create the perfect dinner party with celebrities brilliant way of just coming on and having a chat so yeah casting views across socials and podcast platforms if you want to listen to dan and i talk about other things such as our further thoughts on podcasting as well as our episode on the indie game as dusk falls you can check it out on our website chatsunami.com i also want to thank our pandalorian patrons robotic battle toaster and sonia thank you so so much for supporting the channel and if you want to check out what our patreon has to offer you can check us out at patreon.com forward slash chat tsunami as a first for the year and a first for the outro i want to shout out my amazing podpack collective members of course we've got dan at casting views on twitter slash x and if you want to follow the others we have nerdstalgic at nerdstalgic under slash pod we've got review it yourself at yourself review we have got the two girls one reusable cup podcast at 2g one reusable cup last but certainly not least Seismic Cinema I'm so sorry I keep leaving you to last you're last on the list (laughs) it's not me purposely putting you at the bottom there you can check out Seismic Cinema at Seismic Cinema but until next time thank you all so so much for listening stay safe stay awesome and most importantly stay hydrated